Hello everyone, I am Shahan Laik and today I will discuss about uh, neural uh, control and coordination. So what is neural control and coordination? Actually coordination, what is coordination? Coordination is the process through which two or more organ they, comple they complement with each other. For example, uh, here is an example like when we do physical exercise, the energy demand is increased and increased muscular activity occurs. So coordination means actually making connection with one another. So neural uh, control and coordination means the nerves or the neurons will make actually control. Okay. Now, the next important thing which we will learn is the neural system. So, what is neural system? The neural system of animals is consist of neurons. So, what is neuron? Neuron is actually the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. And it receives different kinds of stimuli. Example, hydra composed of a network of neurons and this one that is the system is also better composed of in, in case of insect, uh, the for, for insect the system is better organized in insect where brain is present along the number of ganglia. So the next is the human neural system. So what happens in human neural system? Human neural system actually consists of these two. One is CNS, another is PNS. CNS consists of brain and the spinal cord. And uh, CNS means central nervous system and PNS means peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system consists of all the nerves that are associated from the system, uh, CNS. Suppose this is brain and this is spinal cord. Now these two consist, uh, these two are actually the CNS. But all the nerves which are originating from this CNS is actually the PNS. Hope you understand this. Now uh, these are, there are two kind of fiber. One is afferent, another is afferent. Afferent and afferent. Afferent means that transmit the impulse from the tissue to the CNS, okay, afferent, afferent means sensory, afferent means sensory, and afferent means sensory, and afferent means motor. So what is the function of sensory? Sensory will carries the sensation from a particular part to, uh, to the CNS. Suppose uh, there is a sensation, there is a touch sensation, someone touch your skin, so these sensation will be carried to the CNS that is carried to the brain on the spinal cord through a nerve and this nerve is known as uh, the uh, in, that is the afferent nerve. And what is efferent? Efferent means motor. So efferent actually means motor. Suppose uh, for that from the brain and the mm, from the brain and the spinal cord suppose uh, a action must be taken to a particular part of the skin so that is maintained through a uh, through a nerve and that is afferent nerve e f f e r e n t afferent afferent means actually the motor nerves okay hope you understand it now uh, we will understand the pns which is actually divided into somatic neural system and autonomic neuma neural system somatic and the autonomic the somatic neural system relays the impulse from cns to the skeletal muscle and autonomic neural system transmit the impulse from cns to the involuntary organs so what is the function of autonomic ans uh, what is the function of uh, ANS that is the autonomic nervous system and what is the function of uh, SNS somatic neural system. 
so autonomic neural system is actually for connection of the cns to the visceral organs visceral organs so for connection of the cns to the visceral ans is there and what is for uh, the sns actually it is for connecting the cns to the muscular system okay so that is the difference hope you understand it another uh, thing is this visceral nervous system it is a part of the peripheral nervous system which consists of nerve fibers which actually controls from cns to the viscera so visceral nervous system means uh, the name itself says that it connects the cns central nervous system with the viscera okay now the next important thing is this one that is neuron as the as the structural and functional unit of the neural system so neuron is actually the structure and function unit of the nervous system it consists of cell body dendrite and axons and cell body contains nasal granules okay now let me show it here with the help of diagram so everyone can understand so this one is the cell body so what is this one this is actually the axon this is the axon okay so what is this this is nucleus and what is uh, these processes these process are actually dendrites these are called dendrites and what about this a uh, small dot 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 processes these are uh, uh, sorry dot uh, structures these are called nasal granules these are called nasal granules these are actually the ribosomal particles uh, now what are these these are actually the squam cells squam cells uh, and what is this sheath this sheath is called the myelin sheath now myelin sheath helps in covering the axon like this and there is a gap and this gap is known as node of ranvir node of ranvir hope you know this node of ranvir now uh you know these uh, structures like uh, this uh, eventually if we go down we get some more structure like this one these small bulb like structure is actually the synaptic bulb okay it is consist of synaptic bulb and this is the axon terminals so actually this is the terminal portion so it is called axon terminal now uh let me teach you about the generation and conduction of the nerve impulse so how actually a nerve uh, impulse takes place the resting uh, axonal membrane is more uh, permeable to potassium and impermeable to sodium so suppose this is a membrane of the nerve it is more permeable it is in the resting uh, membrane potential that is rmp resting membrane potential that is more permeable to potassium so potassium can freely enter into this nerve cell but sodium is uh, sodium cannot so sodium cannot enter sodium cannot enter okay hope you understand sodium cannot enter B but potassium can so if sodium got influx into it so sodium enters it that is known as sodium influx if sodium influx into the nerve then we get depolarization then we get depolarization so what is depolarization uh, let me explain this one depolarization means actually the term depolarization means the polarity is changed N uh, normally the the in resting condition in rest condition or resting condition the nerve will have the positivity outside and the inner uh, side will have the negativity but this will be reversed so this will changed into outside will have negativity and inside will have positivity so this is change of polarity and that is change of polarity and that is depolarization 
and that is depolarization means change in the polarity why this depolarization is occurring due to sodium due to sodium influx due to sodium influx okay hope you understand it due to sodium influx depolarization occurring now uh, let me uh, learn another important thing that is the sodium potassium pump now sodium potassium pump transports uh, transports three sodium outside and two potassium into the cell so now after sodium has been entered into the cell a lot of sodium has entered into the cell now cell is full of sodium now these sodium should be carried outside now you should be bring this sodium outside again to restore the normal one so for restoring the normal potential or resting potential back again this sodium which has entered into the cell should be thrown out but how can you throw the sodiums out for that we have a pump known as sodium potassium pump nkp sodium n for sodium k for potassium p for pump so this pump what is the function of this pump the function of this pump is to throw three sodium out from the cell three sodium three sodium three sodium okay to throw three sodium out from the cell three sodium out from the cell and in return two potassium into the cell and in return it will get two potassium inside the cell okay so three sodium out of the cell it is going out and two potassium it is going in two potassium coming in that is the main job of the sodium potassium pump remember this because it is very important for exam now you can see this picture the first at first you can see the outside is positive and the inside is negative so outside and inside you can see what is the polarity outside is positive but inside is negative that is means it is resting that means it is resting but what happens when sodium is entering now sodium will enter and it will change the polarity now you, you see the inside is positive but the outside is negative you can see in the red red coloration you see here the inside is now positive and the outside is negative so the polarity has been changed and this is depolarization now what will happen here these depolarizing wave will transverse from one place to another just like this so it is actually conduction of the impulse from a point to b in this way from a point to b point it is actually transversing and it is traveling so it is actually the traveling of uh, the impulse okay so what is actually resting potential the electrical potential difference across the resting plasma membrane is known as resting potential so this is the definition so another important thing is action potential what is action potential the electrical potential difference across the plasma membrane at site a is called action potential which is in fact termed as nerve impulse so action potential is actually generated when sodium has been influxed and an action has been taken to generate this potential and that is why it is known as action potential okay now let me tell you about something known as synapse synaptic cleft and all these things so what is synapse suppose this is a neuron ending nerve ending axon terminal and this is another axon terminal so this is the junction between two axon terminal this is the junction which is known as synapse synapse is actually the connection uh, between two axon terminals you can see here synapse is formed 
synapse uh, sorry synapse is formed by the membrane of presynaptic neuron and postsynaptic neuron and they are may be separated by a gap known as cleft so these presynaptic membrane and the, this is the presynaptic membrane and the post this post synaptic membrane so these two are formed mm, forming the synapse and there is a gap and this gap is known as synaptic cleft so now synapse can be of different types like electrical synapse electrical synapse chemical synapse and all this okay electrical and chemical synapse electrical means actually the charge will be uh, transferred and chemical means the neurotransmitter nt will be transferred okay now let us go down you can see this picture now i can easily make you understand so what is this this is the axon and what is this this is the presynaptic knob presynaptic knob now what are these small things these are vesicles synaptic vesicle what are the small yellow colored things which is there in the vesicles so this synaptic vesicle which contains this small small uh, neurotransmitter and neurotransmitter now you can see these neurotransmitter are actually coming out and they are here in the cleft now what are these these are actually receiver these are receptors for the neurotransmitters okay these are receptors for the neurotransmitter now it will receive the neurotransmitter and actually uh, will uh, through that the synapse uh, will be completed and uh, the electrical activity will be completed and uh, and the impulse will travel from uh, presynapse uh, tick knob to the post so we have discussed now let us discuss about the central nervous system cns which consists of the brain and the spinal cord so brain and the spinal cord are actually the cns now cns is uh, covered by meninges cranial meninges and other meninges so meninges means actually the covering what is the meaning of the term meninges meninges means covering meninges means covering okay now it is of three types like the dura matter uh, arachnoid matter and pia matter dura arachnoid and pia matter dura matter is the outermost dura means outermost and the middle one is arach arachnoid middle is the arachnoid and the innermost is known as pia matter okay the pia is the innermost hope you understand it uh, now, if we divide the brain, the brain can be divided into forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Forebrain, this is the fourth brain, forebrain, front, midbrain in the middle, and hindbrain in the back. So, forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Okay. So, this is let me show this diagram also which is very important now this diagram shows the different section of the human brain you can see this is the cerebrum this is the cerebral hemisphere this one is the corpus callosum this one is the corpus callosum cerebral aqueduct so actually it is uh, the connection between the uh, the lateral ventricles we have ventricular system like lateral ventricle connected with the third ventricle this is the third ventricle with the help of cerebral aqueduct so this is actually cerebral aqueduct now this one is the pons this small brain this is the cerebellum this is the medulla so in this way these are the different parts hope you can see it check it out from the book okay now what are the parts of the forebrain 
फोर ब्रेन कंजिस्ट ऑफ सेरिब्रम थैलेमस हाइपोथैलेमस एंड द लेफ्ट एंड द राइट सेरिब्रल हिमिसपियर इज देयर एंड इट इज एक्चुअली कवर्ड बाय कॉर्पस सॉरी इट इज एक्चुअली कनेक्टेड बाय कॉर्पस कैलोजम सो कॉर्पस कैलोजम मेक कनेक्शन बिटवीन द सेरिब्रल हिमिसपियर so what is actually corpus callosum it is actually the track of nerve fiber so it it consists of nerve fiber and another important area is this one hi uh, sorry hypothalamus hypothalamus is the center for the body temperature urge for eating drinking and all these things okay and there are so many hormones that are known as hypothalamic hormones that release from this uh, hypothalamus and also it is uh, associated with deep structure like amygdala hippocampus and all these things which are actually known as the limbic system limbic system okay the next is the midbrain now what is the midbrain consist of mid brain consist uh, it is mid brain is located between thalamus hypothalamus of the fore brain and pons of hind brain so a canal called cerebral aqueduct is there that passes through the mid brain cerebral aqueduct passes through the mid brain the dorsal portion of the mid brain consist of the rounded swelling called corpora quadrigemina and these are also the ra four rounded swellings are there also in the midbrain and that is known as the corpora quadrigemina the next is the hindbrain which comprises of pons cerebellum and medulla cerebellum is the small brain so pons cerebellum and medulla medulla also called medulla oblongata so cerebr uh, cerebellum has a uh, more convoluted surface and you know cerebellum helps in the coordination muscle coordination and also movement position of our body the next is the reflex action and reflex arc so what is a uh, reflex action it is actually the involuntary action reflex action means it is involuntary action without conscious effort so we do not have to make a conscious effort to do the ref reflex action it is involuntary action of the central nervous system the reflex pathway so what is reflex pathway or reflex arc actually uh, these reflex action occurs through a path that is known as reflex arc or reflex pathway so it occurs via different paths i am showing you by this picture you can understand it better now see here this is the stimulus maybe it pin or something that is giving a stimulus and it is first carried with the help of this afferent nerve which is actually the mm, uh, afferent nerve means the sensory and then it is going to drg dorsal root ganglia and then it is coming to this portion that is the gray matter of the spinal cord from gray matter uh, actually there is another neuron called interneuron which connects this afferent with the motor or efferent now the motor neuron or the efferent pathway will be studying which is mm, which is bringing the stimulus back again to the end plate motor end plate or effector and that is the muscle so in this way a, this is the path by which it is coming uh, and come, uh, going to the uh, spinal cord from the from the if, um, from the stimulus receiving area to the spinal cord and then again coming back to the effector this is called reflex arc this is called reflex arc or reflex pathway whatever you call it sensory receptor and processing so there are so many receptors in our body for processing 
different sensory information we have sense organ like we have nose which contains olfactory receptors olfactory bulb is there these olfactory receptors will actually bring it to olfactory bulb which will eventually bring to the olfactory nerve in this way it will carry now tongue is also there which consists of taste buds which has gustatory receptors now eye you can see this is the eye and it is located in the part of the skull known as orbit what are the parts of eye you see this picture you can understand now this is the uh, the the outer ch aqueous chamber this is the outermost chamber which consists of aqueous humor this is the vitreous humor we, which consists of vitreous humor now this is the lens this uh, and what is this this is actually the cornea okay the transparent uh, part of the eye which actually helps in bending the light of the uh, light actually it is known as cornea now this small portion is uh, this is the ciliary ciliary body you can see here this is the ciliary body and what is this one the outermost portion that is sclera then choroid so so sclera is actually the outermost sorry for this sclera is actually the outermost then the choroid and then the innermost that is retina you can get this three layer the outermost sclera then choroid then retina hope you understand it and this is the blind spot where there is no photoreceptor cell this portion there is no photoreceptor cell and so it is blind spot and this is the phobia centralis or phobia yellow spot where the maximum uh, concentration of the cone cells are there so it helps in a in make getting the uh, most uh, beautiful uh, brightest image and m most precise image we can get in phobia now this one is the optic nerve which is going out from here hope you got understand uh, the parts of the eye one thing i forgot i think what is pupil so and what is iris iris is actually a curtain like thing which which is there which is just the curtain of the eye which is in front of the lens and that is called iris now this hole is known as pupil pupil is the hole okay now iris is the curtain and pupil is the hole and what is the function of optic nerve to bring the optical uh, impulse to the brain and what is aqueous humor and what is vitreous humor the space between the cornea and the lens consists of aqueous humor in front and and the space between the lens and the retina is vitreous humor hope you know this thing now if i say what is the mechanism of uh, vision what is the mechanism of vision human eye actually consists of opsin opsin is a protein and retinal retinal is actually an aldehyde so opsin is a protein and retinal is an aldehyde these two things are very important opsin and retinal so what happens actually when light falls when light uh, actually falls light uh, falls then it actually changes the structure of opsin and this cause changes uh, in the potential difference of the photoreceptor cells and eventually impulse is generated that is carried by the visual uh, receptors and optic nerve to the cortex optic cortex now another thing is ear you can see here ear so these are the Mm, parts of the ear first is the pinna then this one is the external ear which contains external auditory canal and this is the tympanic membrane and then the three bones malleus incus stapes 
which is connected to the oval window and then then this one that is cochlea in, uh, from where the cochlear nerve is connected and this one what is this this one is the eustachian tube so what is the function of eustachian tube the function of eustachian tube is to connect the middle ear and pharynx nasopharynx mainly so nasopharynx and middle ear is connected by eustachian tube hope you understand ear now this is the part you can see the three parts now this is uh, these this is the scala tympani and this is the scala media and this is scala vestibuli so three three parts are there one uh, or if we slice the cochlea we get this three part scalas scala vestibuli scala media and scala tympani now there are two important membrane one is the resnar membrane sorry for this i'm showing it again this one you see here resnar membrane this membrane okay so this is the resnar membrane another membrane is also there which is very important and that is basilar membrane so this one is basilar membrane this one resnar membrane and and this one sorry this uh, this is resnar membrane and this one is basilar membrane hope you understand it and another is this one this membrane known as tectorial membrane so this membrane here is known as tectorial membrane okay now semicircular canals these semicircular canals are also there there are semicircular canals which remain in 90 degree with one another actually it remains like this 90 degree with one another and otolith is actually the sensory part which contains saccules and utricle semicircular canals helps in actually making the dynamic balance of our body okay now mechanism of hearing this is the last part when the sound wave actually comes i'm i'm telling you by that uh, picture only the above picture was very good for explaining also not this one uh, this picture so first the sound waves come here and it is concentrated by this pina now the sound wave will go into this and then it will strike the tympanic membrane now tympanic membrane from there it will be actually amplified by these three small bones malleus incus and stapes and eventually it will go into cochlea now in cochlea there is otolith that is the hearing organ and also it will be transferred by cochlear nerve so in this way this transpired so this is the end of this video if you like this video make a thumbs up and subscribe our channel